Hi, we're the Archbishop School. Uh, our project is investigating cardiac myosin and contraction velocity in birds. There is a well-known relationship between the body mass of mammals and their heart rate. The larger the animal, the lower the heart rate. This inverse correlation also holds true for bird species. If heart rate is faster in smaller mammals and birds, then there must be a corresponding reduction in time taken for one cardiac cycle to be completed. It has been found in mammals that the cardiac tissue itself, which is largely composed of the protein myosin, contracts at a lower velocity in larger animals. The important question is how is this brought about? What is it about the myosin that enables it to contract, it, to contract at such different speeds? The identification of variations in myosin that lead to differences in heart function in humans has implications for advances in treatment and diagnosis of inherited cardiomyopathies. Using human tissue is clearly not an option for a school-based project. Cardiac myosin isoforms in birds are little studied and our project aimed to mirror the type of studies being carried out in humans and mammals to give us better understanding of the processes and techniques involved and to investigate a little known area. The first essential question for our study involves the myosin itself. Several different isoforms of myosin have been found in birds. We need to identify the myosin isoform present in the cardiac tissue of a range of species. The expectation is that they will be myosin 7 or 15. Myosins are a large family of ATP-driven proteins that use actin as a track along which to move. Genomic studies have revealed 35 classes of myosin as shown in this phylogene yeah, phylogenetic tree. The group of myosins shown in blue in the top left of the tree include those found in cardiac tissue. Striated muscles use different isoforms of this myosin-2 subgroup. Most mammals express up to a dozen myosin-2 isoforms. These isoforms are named according to the gene coding for the protein. MYH6 and MYH7 code for two cardiac forms, alpha and beta myosin in humans. Myosin-2 isoforms contain two heavy chains, or MHCs, each about 2,000 amino acids in length which constitute the head and tail domains. Four myosin light chains, MLCs, two per head, bind the heavy chains. OK, so we started the project about a year ago, initially looking at the muscle fibers and learning more about the muscle structure. We used laser, laser diffraction methods to determine the sarcomere lengths. To identify the myosin isoforms, isoforms present, we need to extract myosin from the cardiac tissue. We tried the myosin extraction protocol to extract myosin from the porcine cardiac tissue. The muscle tissue is homogenized to break up the muscle fibers. We looked at whether hammering the sample on ice blocks um, would be as effective a method as using a homogenizer. The sample is mixed with a buffer solution on ice cold water, added so that the myosin precipitates out of the solution as a solid. The myosin sample undergoes several rounds of centrifuging with potassium chloride solution and collecting the pellet. This should result in a concentrated myosin sample. Electrophoresis was carried out on the extracted myosin sample run against a comparison of pure myosin to check that the myosin extraction had been successful. The protein samples were boiled in a sample buffer and loaded in the wells and the gel plates ready for electrophoresis. But we had um, problems with both precast gels and those that we had cast on the day. So the university ran our sample again, and these results showed that myosin extraction had been successful, with clear bands visible corresponding to the myosin heavy and light chains. Having practiced the extraction on more readily available material, we moved on to bird cardiac tissue. The students sourced us several pheasant hearts. The heart needs to be removed shortly after death and frozen or stored on ice immediately to prevent the myosin from breaking down. We've located an ostrich farm which can prepare an ostrich heart in this manner. They're expecting a suitable bird to be available by the spring. For the pheasant myosin extraction day in the summer, we were joined by the Year 11 students who are opting to take biology A-level this year. Unfortunately, we again had issues with the running of our gels, so we were unable to gain usable results from this session. 
The University of Kent provided us with some samples of crow and quail to run alongside the pheasant. For the session, we adjusted the mice and extraction protocol to speed it up so that we can run the extraction and the jails within the time available in the school day. The results were positive in the way that we could see bands for all three birds, although the pheasant sample may need to be re-precipitated and run to gain a more distinct band. In order to identify the mice and isoform present, we will take the samples from the university where they can be run through the mass spectrometer. The gel bands will be cut out and digested using trypsin. The gel is then extracted with a buffer to draw the fragments out. The separated fragments of different sizes are injected into the mass spectrometer. By comparing the mass of the fragments with those precipitated for the protein expected, we can evaluate if the sample is myosin 7 or 15 or any other myosin. Once we have identified the ice form or forms present, we need to look at how these might account for the differences in contraction velocities. Velocity has been found to be characteristic of the isoform, and the same isoform gives a slower maximum velocity from muscles of larger animals compared with smaller animals. The assumption is that small sequence changes between isoforms and between species are responsible for these differences. So where should we be looking for these differences? In muscle cells, the long-coiled tails of individual myosin molecules join, forming the thick filaments of the sarcomere. The force-producing head domains stick out from the side of the thick filament, ready to walk along the adjacent actin-based thin filaments. Studies have shown that for embryonic and non-muscle myosins, that the tail regions show significant divergence, whilst the head regions are well conserved. For beta cardiac myosin, the opposite is true, which suggests that it is the head region which might account for the differences in contraction velocity. The motor domain contains an actin binding site split by a major cleft. Tight binding of the actin requires the cleft to be closed. ATP binding opens the cleft and disassociates the actin from the myosin. Hydrolysis of ATP in its binding pocket primes the myosin before actin can rebind close the cleft and displace the hydrolysis products, phosphate and ADP. During the displacement of the products, small movements around the nucleotide pocket are amplified via a lever arm to move the myosin relative to the actin binding site. The power stroke. A recovery stroke in linked to the ATB hydrolysis step is required while the motor is detached from actin to complete the cycle. Current models of the myosin cross-bridge cycle suggest a simple relationship between the maximum velocity and steps in the attached part of the ATPA cycle. The cross-bridge must detach rapidly once it has completed its working stroke. The detachment rate is controlled by the rate at which ATP binds to the cross-bridge and induces the cleft opening. For all muscle type myosins measured to date, the ATP-induced disassociation of the cross-bridge is very fast completing around one millisecond and too fast for the factor to too fast to be the factor which defines the shortening velocity. In contrast, ADP release does vary for the different myosin types and it is thought that it is the ADP release that limits the velocity. To help us to, uh, start looking for the differences in protein sequences for the, uh, of the isoforms, we've had some training in bioinformatics. We use the NCB, NCBI website to search for the myosin protein se sequences. <coughs> By name, we found myosin 7 in chicken, myosin 15 in ostrich and quail. Further sequences, uh, we found myosin 15 in canary, crow, chicken, and another chi uh, myosin 7 in chicken. We identified by protein sequences using BLAST, which is the basic lo local alignment search tool. We failed to find anything for pheasant, as both of the name and the protein sequence we could not find. This is because of an incorrect label of the sequence, or it may not be on the database, as it is not a commonly researched animal. We used Clustal Omega, a program for generating multiple sequence alignments of proteins, to see how the to identify differences between proteins. It enables you to see positions in the amino acid chain that conserved and the positions that vary. Cluster omega can be used to produce a phylogenetic tree to demonstrate how closely the species are related. The myosin tree fit uh, with expectations as the evolutionary history of the species we investigated. 
with ostrich being the most distant related species in the evolutionary terms. Other areas that we can start to look at include measuring the ADP release, of, uh, re release rate of different species. We can also investigate the contraction velocity of the myosins from different bird species to see how widely that ver they vary and how well they correlate with re reported heart rates. The shortening velocity can be used, use, measured, can be, uh, <laughs> can be measured using the intro, uh, the in, uh, yeah, in vitro motility assay. The myosin sample is placed on a coated glass slide and acting is added. The myosin sticks to a slide and the acting attaches to the myosin. The acting is labelled with a fluorescent dye so that when the myosin pulls the acting chain, the movement of the acting can be, used, can be viewed with a fluorescent microscope. The distance travelled by the actin and the time taken are recorded and the contraction velocity is calculated. We, also continue, we will also continue to refine our practical techniques and continue to search for the sources of bird cardiac material for a variety of species and different ma masses and heart rates. Another area of research will be, we will be using the bioinformatics tool to look at differences between the myosin heavy chains and a wider range of species and extending the searches to include the sequences of the myosin light chains. We would like to finish by thanking all of those involved in supporting our project, to the Wellcome Trust for giving us funding and, uh, for our project, uh, to Dr Colthurst uh, for his support and the University of Kent team who has given up so much of their time to train us in the techniques and guide us through the direction of the project should take. Good. How are you going to tell which isoform of mice and the various birds have got? How are you, how, how are you going to identify them? Um, so, as we said earlier, we're going to further plan a trip to the University of Kent to use the mass spectrometer to, in order to take the samples that we have from our recent um, trials and then extract the bands from our gels that we've run and then to see if it's either mycin 7, mycin 15, or if it's a completely different mycin or something completely different. So you're just basing it on the difference of mass? Yeah, and then so, we're going to... So you can to work out the different isoforms, you know the molecular mass of the different isoforms, and then work it out from that, yeah? Yeah. Question? Yeah. Okay, no, I think we're right. Thank you.